Okay, so today we're looking at Bomber by Tatsuru Yamashita. I've probably just butchered that um, pronunciation there. But I'm going to break down a couple of the parts. Um, we're in standard tuning. And, and for the main opening bass line, we're starting on the fifth fret of the second string. And then we're hitting its octave. So two. And then we're going five seven on the D string. And then five seven on the G string. So, and then we're going to the second string again. We're going three five, and then three five on the D string. It's all very kind of like in a minor pentatonic sort of feel. So after you do three five, three five, you do, which is the top string, third fret, heads octave. So like that. So then we go three five on the top string, and then we're going to three on the second string, hitting its octave, and then we're hitting an A with its octave, which could do you can do an open A or um, I'm pretty sure it, it it could be I think it's fretted on the on the record could be wrong because it's like a sort of a, I guess he's playing like a jazz bass so it's sort of very. The mids are quite warm, regardless if you play open strings a lot on jazz basses. Um, so we've got. So that's our main bass line. So our second part, um, we go into sort of like, I guess, like a, a verse or maybe a post or pre chorus. Not really sure. It's a it's a very interesting song the way it's laid out. So um, we come out of our main riff, which is so hitting that C, but instead of going A, we go A to G, and then we go. So it's basically you're hitting the G on the D string here on the fifth fret. We're going pulling off to the third fret, and then we're doing it's basically like a like another minor pentatonic sort of thing going on here. So, and then we're hitting the fifth fret of the second string, and then hitting that G again. So, and then down back to the D string again. So, three, three, five. So. And then we're doing the same basically for C, it's just all a string down, so. so. Same pattern, just, you're just, this time you're just a string down on the A string doing that. Okay, so for the, uh, another part here we've got, um, it kind of goes back into the same kind of feel as the main bit. Um, so we go back from... So that's sort of starting on that D of the fifth string there again. Um, the feel kind of changes. I guess it was sort of, you know, I guess he had a lot of, the bass player had a lot of freedom to sort of do what he wanted around those sort of patterns and stuff. Um, but basically it goes D to C and then G to A. So. Basically that sort of feel. It's all just round. You know, you can hit near enough any sort of those box shapes around those uh, chords and you'll probably land on something that sounds good. <laughs> uh, that's great advice. Um, and then coming out of that, we go to... So it's that walk. It's basically just walking from the first fret of the A string and you're just doing like a chromatic thing. Um, so we're going... So just it's just a chromatic walking up to that the, the D to start back for that main bass line again. 
So yeah, that's basically mm. the main parts. There is like a base breakdown bit, which I'll probably do like a future video and put it on like Instagram or something. Um, it's just like a sort of, I guess it's kind of a solo part. Um, also, my advice is never buy um, microphones off Amazon, as this this isn't off Amazon. This is from like the seventies or something. Um, but if you ever think you're going to buy two lapel mics um, for twenty quid, which seems like a good, a good deal, you know, uh, don't because it's actually two lapel mics going into the same source. So for some reason, I can be double mic'd for no reason whatsoever because it's all going to one channel. So don't just don't just buy one. I don't know. I thought I was getting a bargain there. I thought I was getting two, and I was like, "Oh, I've hacked it. Fact life. No, I haven't." So yeah. <laughs>